Hello, uh, this is the demo video which shows how to extract data from an email attached CSV file and then use the data from that to update items and the whole process is done automatically. So before I actually go into the demo, I do want to walk through the requirements of what this um, uh, demo needs to run successfully. Um, so I'm going to first go into our SharePoint server and this is a SharePoint 2013 Service Pack 1 uh, running on a Windows 2012 server. Um, so the first thing I want to do is confirm that the inbound configuration is actually up and running. Um, so let's go and look at that setting first. So as I go over here, you can see that I do have my IS 6.0 manager set up. So when I click on that, I can see that I do have my inbound SMTP set up. When I take a look at the properties, I go into delivery, advanced, and I see that I do have a fully qualified domain name set up over there. So that's one uh, setting that we've confirmed. Second thing is I'm going to go into the central administration and I'm um, going into uh, system settings I see in my email and text messages I have configured incoming email settings and over there I have enabled it um, in the directory management service um, I've set that as no uh, what the directory management service does is it has a, um, a connection with your active directory such that if you create distribution groups or if you add those emails in your list of document library it will automatically create that distribution list on your active directory as well or the distribution group um, in the dev environment that's perfectly fine to do that but um, in, in most of the uh, scenarios in the real life scenarios you may not have that option that's why in this demo I'm trying to replicate a real life scenario uh, in the email over here, I've put in the same uh, email address that we saw in the IIS 6.0 manager, and the email is accepted from all email, email servers. So we've gone ahead and confirmed that at least the inbound email setup and configuration is, um, is all good to go. So now I'm going to go to the actual site, and I want to confirm two things, that there is in fact a document library, and that document library is where all the CSV files are going to be dropped off. So in this document library, um, it's pretty much out of the box, except that I went ahead and added a new column. Um, it's a uh, choice type column. I call it data extracted. And the data extracted has a no and a yes. And the default is no. Um, so that And then this also has the incoming email set up. And I've just made it the name as harvest data. And then the fully qualified domain name of the server. Um, then also I want to show the list where items will be populated automatically um, and if you've read the article it, it what this list does is it receives you know say that there is a third party tool which is recording all the data of these uh, uh, fruit items you know things like grapes bananas whatnot um, and it's showing a daily report of how many uh, fruit types are packaged shipped and recycled um, and it sends it out the report out as a CSV file um, and then that, the data of the CSV file will be automatically added to this list over here. Um, so that's pretty much it. The list columns are nothing you know, spectacular. It's just a simple, um, the name packaged is a number, shipped is a number, recycled is also a number type column. Um, so we've taken a look at the, uh, the two lists. And um, I also want to show an example of the CSV files that I'm going to use. So let me open up. So these are the different examples of the CSV files. And you know, same thing, it's, it's a comma separated value with the title, which is name, package, ship, recycled. And then I just put the data over here. It's a very simple raw, raw data over here. Um, and you know, I've kept separate examples of these so that we'll be sending them as emails um, just to confirm that everything is running. Now in your real life scenario, if you actually do have a third party tool which is sending out this information, then what will happen is, um, uh, you know the tool will send out the email and your so SharePoint server's inbound email will accept it 
and then the CS the script that we build will extract the data and this will all happen automatically um, a recommendation for that is uh, try to match the timing um, such that if you knew you know that the third party tool is sending out that email as a CSV file say at you know 9 30 a.m. in the morning then you want that script on your task schedule set up for something that runs at 9.45 or 10 a.m. so that you give enough buffer time between the actual data, the CSV file that's come into your document library as against when the script is running. All right, so the final thing I want to show is the script itself. And the script, I've broken it down into two sections. Um, it's the section that actually downloads the um, um, the you know the CSV file and this is what it does um, the couple of things I do want to point out in the uh, script is um, you know it, it, it goes ahead and um, you know updates the data extracted column by itself it's not something that uh, a workflow does it's actually the uh, um, the data extracted file that does I mean this the data extracted um, section in this PowerShell that's what takes care of that the other thing is um, once the CSV file is downloaded, um, this section of the script will actually take the data from the CSV and it will update it into the list. Um, and so that's that's the whole section that it's pulling the uh, using the get svweb finds the list and it goes ahead and updates each of these columns we just saw, which is the name, package, shipped, recycle, um, and and then um, it basically goes ahead and deletes that CSV file. So that brings up another good point is a CSV file is temporarily located on the server um, and I have actually have a uh, folder where I've kept these scripts or kept the script that's where the script is and the temp location is where um, the CSV file is temp temporarily housed and in the last section of the script it'll go ahead and delete that as well um, so that covers just a brief outline of what the script as well does and the script is provided um, in the uh, in the uh, TechNet article as well. So let's go ahead and I'll run a full demo and during the demo I'll actually show you the steps as to what's going on. Um, and for the sake of the demo the emails will be sent manually. Um, it's not going through any third-party application that's sending out the report. I'm going to be sending out that report um, but you can actually automate the whole process yourself um, or the tool will do that. Um, so here we go. I'm going to first send out and the name of that list was harvest the email address of that list uh, sorry the document library is harvest data that uh, at sp 2013christianfamilybiz uh, I'm gonna attach the first um, CSV file I'm gonna go ahead and send it uh, do you want to send this yep that's fine send it so while the email has gone out we can actually go straight into our SharePoint server Go into the inet, the mail, and if we were fast enough, we would actually be able to see uh, an EML file which would be sitting in the queue over here. Um, if we don't see it over here, and it usually means two things: that the exchange hasn't really dropped off that EML file over here yet, or it already has. SharePoint is taking care of that and the data should be in our list. So let's just quickly go at the list as well. Um, or first we go into the document library. So it's not here yet. It's not here yet, so let's go back over here and wait to see when the EML file comes. Because what's happening is the email was sent out successfully. It's now sitting on the exchange side. Uh, it may be in a queue or your exchange environment will be fast enough to just send it out. Um, and then after exchange sends it out, the inbound email over here, the SMTP part will ho temporarily hold it in the queue. And then it's all based on your on the timer services. So once this is finished off, um, it'll get deleted from here and then you will see it um, in your document library. Okay, so it's still going to come over here. In case we missed it, we'll come back into the harvest. And yeah, it happened fast enough that we didn't even catch it sitting over here in the queue. Um, it's now in the uh, um, the document library over here. Um, 
So see what's happened. The, the CSV file that we emailed is now in your document library and the data extracted is set to no. Um, so now that we have the data, let's go back into our SharePoint server and we'll actually run the script manually. Uh, but in, in your real life scenario, you know, you would have timed this all accordingly like I just mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and run the script. The script is running. And I've put in these write host statements, which basically says what's going on. So while the script is running, you will from time to time see these write host statements. Um, and that's what happens. It says the first statement is the destination location. That's where the uh, CSV file is temporarily sitting. It tells you where the source library is, um, which in this case is harvest drop-in. The value of the data extracted choice type column was initially no, and um, after the data is extracted, it's set to yes. Um, one more thing is let's go ahead and check if the data was actually, I mean, the CSV file was deleted. So if it is, if the script has run successfully, two things should happen. We should not see the CSV file over here because the script deleted that. And now if we go into the list, we should see the data over here, and we do. So the CS, the first CSV file that we used, we can go ahead and compare that. And that's what it is. The first CSV file, apples, 100, 150, 100, 150, peaches, 50, 50, 80, and same thing for the grapes. Um, so let's go ahead and send a few more. This time I'll use the second attachment. And since this is a daily report, it will be going out, um, you know, one day at a time. So you'll always have just one attachment going out at a time. And it's fine if there is a subject. Let's see if we can catch the mail in the queue fast enough. If it hasn't, then we should already see it in the drop down. Yep, it did see just a few seconds ago. That's just the one that was sent by us. Um, all right, so we did that. And initially you see that I was the one who sent the email, so it records that. But once the script runs, it's the system account that has modified it, which is the script. All right, so we go back over here. Uh, let's go back into the server and we'll run that script again. And because of that data extracted um, column, um, the script goes through all the items, uh, but it only catches the one where the data extracted column equals no. And there you go. So the script has run successfully. So now, um, when we go back to the list, well, let, if the document library, um, this will turn into no, and then that will change into the system account. And it did. It turned into yes, sorry. And then over here, we see more data. And then we'll let's just for the sake of, you know, confirmation, we'll send out another one. sent out See if it's already here.
All right, so it's here. It just came in. And again, the modified by was Daniel. Data extracted is currently no. So we go back into the SharePoint server, run the script. And the script ran successfully. So if you go back again, this should change to yes. The modified by will change into the system account and we should see the data on the CSV, I mean on the list and we do. So this successfully shows that um, the script works, the inbound email is set up correctly and um, you know, we are able to extract the data from a uh, email attachment which is a CSV and um, you know it extracts the data to your list. Now if you use your third party reporting tool, if you just use report builder you can go ahead and, and build your report over here because now that you, now you have the data. Um, the one thing that I have called out in the article is that uh, you need the format of the CSV to be consistent and by format I mean the rows, like the name, package, shipped, recycled. This data has to be consistent um, and the reason for that is if you add more data automatically and if that data over here we don't have a column for it in the SharePoint the script will still run it's just that that section of the data in the CSV will not be stored on the list over there because there is no column of that kind. So that's just the one thing I want to call out. Um, hope this information in this video was helpful. Thanks.